Hello everybody, Digfake here and welcome back to another reactions video. Today we're going to be going over Cyberpunk 2077 Night City Wire Episode 2. I'm a little behind, but let's jump right in here and see what's going on. You don't believe in no fate. Uh, every day digging the grave. Uh, stepping up to the stakes. Uh, city of dreams, city of dreams. That was such a good intro. Hello and hey, welcome how's it to episode going? two of Night City Wire. Still like her this painting is the in the show background. From us at CD Project Red, where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. In today's episode, we're going to be deep diving into Life Pass and showing you a brand new gameplay video, as well as having a chat to Philip from our quest team. Then we're going behind the scenes and taking a look at how refused to bringing the band Samurai to life. And then we're showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. So let's get started. I'm looking Street forward King, to the quest Nomad guy. Or Corpo. Which will you pick first? Oh, maybe Corpo, but probably not. I don't know. Life Paths. Night Sea Resident Database, choose your character backstory. Hmm, Corpo. Well, who do we have here? I just, I love it. I like that the license plate is blurred out too. Like if they're doing a legal activity, because it looks like they're all digital. Apparently my collar and my shirt are all fucked. I just woke up. Okay, everyone, we'll survive. The details, man. The cross, the sweater, the way the seas are rolled up, the extra little wrinkles in it, it just looks worn. So much good detail, the little scuff marks on the backboard, the graffiti. I forgot to mention, guys, I am super hyped for this game. I cannot wait for it to come out. I do nitpick, I do criticize, and I do, like, point out stupid little things, but, like, still, the devs did an amazing job of just to get that out of the way. But, like, I'm looking here, and the car, the cracked pavement looks a little weird, to be honest. It looks very, like, you know old games where they would do the 2D grass images? That's kind of what this pavement looks like. It doesn't have much... 3D texture to it where it's cracked underneath their feet. I still love the ads, the detail though. Grew up in Haywood. Whole street was my family. Whole street was his family. We've already seen this trailer, so I'm just kind of looking for like super little details here because I just I love. Oh, I love the environments. They're so good. This street is incredibly clean for this game. Like, there's no trash, there's no real scuff marks. You can see the turn lines in the pavement and over the crosswalks. And I love that you can see the 3D texture on the crosswalks. Hmm. But like, the streets themselves here, there's no garbage, there's no buildup, and like some of the other scenes, it's very, very clean. Family. Neighbors helped each other out. Thought nothing off. Ah, I can see his belt clipping through his little uh, trouser pants there. Not a big deal. And also... I never noticed that before. If you look at this main guy, I do this right with the green screen. Right. Nope, it's going to cut off. Halfway down his back, there's a thing right here. I can use my mouse. Oop, there's a glitch. You can actually see through it. You can see through him and see his chain on the other side. I never noticed that tiny little glitch there. Huh. I'm sure they'll fix that kind of stuff, and this is like earlier rendering, but like there are these little glitches there. The detail in this guy is so good. Nobby. I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here. I still love this scene. One of my favorite scenes in all the trailers so far. It's just hilarious watching these girls beat the crap out of this guy. Die here. Childhood memories. Popping buildings. Man, their cutscenes look so good. Taste of blood from a split lip. <laughs> Wait, what was that guy's face? I am Does he have a fully robotic face? Lit. No, okay. I saw his walkie-talkie, which he has two of for some weird reason, on his downswing. Looks a little bit weird. Oh, motherfucker. Got everybody fighting for a slice of the street. Get the Love fuck the out Love the car gatherings. If you keep getting jumped, you find some stronger tubers. I keep getting jumped to find some better tubers. Do you want to spend the rest of your days blasting scabs? Or become a legend? Oof, it's that combat though. This is some of that good steps. combat that looks fast and or speedy. Become a legend overnight. We have arrived. The major. Ready to get your cherry bobbed? Oh, yeah. Such a well-done character. 
the animations and everything. My childhood. Let's see. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hill. I've criticized this before, and I've seen clips of this game where they seem to have fixed it. But the smoothness of this car on this kind of road just seems really Racing weird. Racing my to bobber me. for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth corn. So I love the detail. Look at that truck in the background over here, this right hand side. So cool. Fire burning. Just the different scope of people is really, really cool. Like they all look different. Her neck looks freaking broken. By the way, it's cool. It's like an old windmill of some sort. And you can see the city lights off in the background. It's just such a cool little view. Field. We nomads choose who to make our family. A choice forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. I still don't know what he's repairing there, where you just unplug something and plug it back into a different family's spot. Family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. Makes you an out. It's floating things. Pieces. Is that like corporate like police and shit. City. Can you imagine having like those super high powered like OP hovering vehicles chasing you around and shit like cop cars? Damn. I mean, in the city, I think they would have a kind of a hard time following you around, but they look really cool. And the border walls here. It's just so good. It's so pretty. Makes you an outcast. I'm just admiring this truck here. I'm taking a second. I love the color scheme. I love white and blue cars like this. Whew. Just looks so good. The gap in between the the footboard and the like where the step up and everything looks really large, but like hey, you got big boots, you can fit your feet in there. That little car in front of him looks weird. Can you imagine trying to back that thing up? That rear window like this thing right here? What is this? That's so small. Leaving South California. Cast among outcasts. What is this? You know? Camarado. I know. I Ooh, saw the bikers it right in your there. heart the first time we met. You know what I always liked about nomads? That shotgun Your pistol. Taste. No, hunger for freedom. Not easy <laughs> to come back in the city. Corpse got their. Hmm, I never really analyzed that before. Hunger. Where's for this drive through Not the dirt? Not easy. So that car, its rear wheels aren't on the ground. What I always liked about nomads. Your taste. Oh, way no. too far back. Hunger for freedom. Yeah, so even in the first frame, the rear wheels aren't on the ground. Second frame, no, no wheels on the ground. At no point are the... Nah, they're in the ground now. That looks weird. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. Off with your head. I do like the, the decap patients and all that stuff in I games. It's just those fun. Reports you asked for. They were supposed to be I'm ready yesterday. The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. The world's never going to find out. If I go down, you're going down with me. No, I'm not fucking joking. Stop whining. That's a request. quick way to get yourself zeroed, ma'am. But no way you're fucked, right? You're the one who fixes other people's shit. If you work in type of counter intel, you're always fucked. Uh, today, they got you to zero somebody. Tomorrow. Look at somebody else to Robot's zero so you. cool. What's the rules, Jack? Brian, people. Want to be top? Got to have some skin in the game. Yeah, but you're not on top. It's a borough Arasaka is. And you're the Take down the course from the inside. There. Work for yourself. Live for yourself. That's the only way. Who are you? Who do you want to be? I just want to be the dude that just like takes down the whole organization and whoops some ass. Well, I want to be. Eh, it's no longer November 19th. Philip, it is so good to see you again. It's actually been a while since I've had a chance to interview you about cyberpunk. So I think for today, we'll start with a question that everybody wants to know. How does the path you pick affect your time in Night City? It actually affects your time quite a lot throughout the whole game, but let's start at the beginning because basically our game has three different starts depending on your life path. Uh, as an example, if you choose the street kid life path, you have lived most of your time in Night City. You know the streets, you know the gangs, you know the slang, you kind of know what's going on in the, let's say, lower life aspects of the city, which can of course give you lots of good opportunities also later on in the game. 
Uh, but if you start as a nomad, you actually used to be part of a nomad clan and a nomad family. Because nomads that roam the deserts around Night City, curious that how big of a difference it actually, actually makes. Actually, value their family above anything. But for one reason or another, you actually left that family behind, and now the beginning of the game for you will actually be how to get into Night City and how to make a new life there. Then you can also choose to actually be a corpo and choose the corporate life path. And that basically means I'll probably choose corporate just because less people play City it. Or be a little bit different. Or in the of the Badlands, but actually inside the boardroom. Because you wrote really the corporate like... letter of the Arasaka Corporation. Which basically gives you the ability to sometimes, you know, read between the lines, read people when they're trying to do business, which of course can give you many nice opportunities later on. So this isn't just about the start of the game. Can you maybe help people understand how this translates into the gameplay? Yeah, so the thing is, we make Cyberpunk a real RPG. And part of that is that you can play your character from the start to the end. And of course, you know, we have these life paths affecting the beginning of the game, but we wanted to make it so you have your life path opportunities throughout the whole cool game until the, the game is over. Dress. And as an example, we do that by giving you additional options in dialogues. So I can give you one specific example. And this is a mission where you have to steal a flathead robot from the Maelstrom gang. Basically, those Maelstromers stole that flathead before from a corporate transport. And the owner of that corporate transport, Meredith Stout, wants you to do something else. And this is an optional objective. And even within that objective, we want to give you some options. So as an example, if you have a corporate life path, you basically know what Meredith Stout is really about. You can read between the lines and you can get some additional options that maybe actually later enable you to do a completely different thing with the Maelstrom gang. And huh. if you're a nomad, so you cool know if you're, exactly like, really some more details about the how these maelstromers <clears throat> would have even Not that been false able choice to kind of thing. a robot like that from Meredith Stout, who's part of the very powerful Militech Corporation. As a street kid, we, as an example, don't give you a specific new dialogue option in that dialogue, because as a street kid, you do not have a lot of experience dealing with higher up people like Meredith Stout. But we want to give you additional options that fit your life path very well. So later, when you actually talk to the Maelstrom gang, one member of the gang offers you some illegal substance, but as a street kid, you actually know what this is about. You can talk some shop with him, and that might actually make that character like you a little bit more. So Philip, I do have a couple of extra questions for you based on the video we just saw. And the first is about nomads. So the nomad life path, this starts in a place Driving looks the so Batman. smooth sometimes. Is this somewhere you get to visit even if you don't pick nomad to start with? Uh, yes, Drifted. absolutely. He's losing so it. the thing is, Night City is surrounded by this huge landscape that we call the Badlands. And you can go there whenever you want. So as an example, if you actually do play the nomad life path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. Yeah, the wheels are on the ground-ish. The front wheels keep the coming off the ground later for in the car. Game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want. Thing is, you might I don't think he stopped to, before he hit that concrete can barrier. Be a pretty dangerous place at first, because time has not been very kind to the Badlands. There have been many wars in the past. There's global warming. So most people that do live out there don't really have another choice about it or are nomads that love this life and are all about it and are very battle-hardened. Like a little kid and stuff. We, of course, also want to tell their stories because we want to tell many, many different stories throughout like the, the cyberpunk details genre, which like means the writing that you and will stuff. also find missions that lead you out in the Badlands or where you deal with the people living there. So, Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about the character Padre? He's the guy we see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Who is this man? Yeah, so Padre is actually one of the fixers in Night City. And fixers are people that work as intermediaries. So if someone who has a lot of money needs a problem solved, they go to a fixer. And a fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial. So Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you... Love the car scenes in this game. So interesting. I love that big truck in the background. Oh, it's so the street kid grew up in, so you already know him. You might have already seen another one of our fixers. Love the little details here, like the fighting going on in the TV screen in the back of the seat, smoke coming out, just little tiny things, and like the wear on the leather. The car is not perfect. 
Pierce, who is called Looks Dexter so Deshawn, and he works in a different part of the city. So specifically Padre, you might know him as a street kid, but even if you played other life paths, you might sooner or later meet him because he's operating in Haywood, which is a pretty big place with many good jobs. So if you want to make some cash there, you will sooner or later deal with Padre. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Now on my first playthrough, pretty sure I'm going to be picking Nomad. But for those watching, we would love to know what you'll be picking. So have a think about it like and purpose. send us a tweet. Don't forget that later in this episode, we're going to be showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. But before that, let's I talk hope there's about a lot music, of weapons. because music plays a huge part in bringing Night City to life. Now in future episodes, we're going to talk about things like radio stations and even the original score. But today, we're going to take a look behind the scenes at how Refused to bringing Johnny Silverhand's band, Samurai, to life. I wouldn't write these lyrics for my... The detail in this world is amazing! I mean, where else do you go with that? There's like, all the different ads, the type of ads, the fire, the bushes, the reflections. So it's kind of interesting to, to get into like the mindset of who is this character and what would they write about or what, what, what's their agenda. I love all the graffiti and shit. It's interesting to, to try to like catch a language never seen that weapon before in the game. The blade out the knee. That's cool. Switch. Oh, no, that's elbow. Yeah, that's elbow. A bladed elbow? Pretty cool. It's interesting to, to try to, like, catch a language that... Intro to the song is try amazing. Catch a language that's, like, a part of this game. Coming Samurai. There is a reason why we're here. I was about to say these graphics don't look that good. Oh wait, it's real life. Lol. It was pure thermal. Could you imagine? He was a fan of the band. He knew Refuse and he knew my voice and he said, oh, that's a perfect voice for, for Johnny. And that they wanted, I guess, a sound that was a bit contemporary from when it's when Johnny's supposed to have had the band, because he's sort of like an anti-establishment kind of guy. Gonna drag a corporal rat on stage, make him kneel, douse him with gas, and light him up. So of course there are things That'd that you relate to, and like just like this outcast and this rebel that's fighting against like the, the corporals, and that's definitely something that's been a part of my life and a part of the fuse life. We came out of the punk rock scene of uh, northern Sweden. He's like the future version of us. You know? <laughs> so I, I think it makes sense. I think it totally makes sense for us to be here making these songs uh, about him or for him. You know? So it's pretty cool. That's yeah, about finding the right fit when you're making yeah. this kind of stuff. No, 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 no trills. But yeah, but like wide vibrato. And then, I mean, just sort of build, I mean, yeah. slowly build, sort of intensity. We don't have a different mode than just going all in. So we're, we really work on these songs, trying to make them as good as possible. But then they're not actually our songs. It's interesting as, as a musician to play another musician, because that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, we're not here. <laughs> that is interesting, yeah. It's like a little subdivide. Samurai. And I'm here with Johnny <laughs> Silverman, you know, so it's like the voice we're representing here is someone else. We'll never fade away! It's uh, been a mind fuck. Mind fucks are good occasionally. Your little house. Should jam in it. He is. Oh, I called him her. My bad. I apologize. I mean, the shouting in itself is just like second nature to me because I've been I've been doing this for a very long time. But then, when someone comes in and says, "I'm happy with everything except for Azalin," again, it's Azza. 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 
Okay. As in, not as in, yeah. Think of that accent, or think of that like enunciation. It's a bit weird because it is a, it's a very different way of singing when, you, when you're screaming like that, and it's hard to sort of... Swallowing some syllables there. Adjust your accent. Oh uh, yeah, just try it again. So it's, it's been a bit kind of frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't, it wasn't... Perfectionist. But like, that's CD Projekt Red it for It wasn't you. horrible, but it wasn't great. But I mean, I get it. I mean, we, we have to maintain the illusion that this character that's a character of the game also is, is me, like when I'm singing it. So it makes sense. But yeah, it's, it's a bit different to have someone telling you exactly how to enunciate things. Because I'm not used to, usually people are just like, give me a thumbs up and then like, you know, you, you think the things like the rhythm and you think about the pitch and you think about all these things. But then someone comes in and like, that word sounded weird. I'm like, what? No, it's, it's how I sing. But so it's, it's been a very- yeah, It's uh, not you sing it. It's yeah, actor life. It's pretty painful. <laughs> Criticism, man, it sucks. <laughs> It's all right. See this soon, I'm chipping in. Roll the boots, I'm chipping in. Belt that coat, I'm chipping in. May have clouds. There's a lot it's of screaming. My voice would break and die in like 10 minutes. As, as a person that's not a gamer, I don't think I fully understand the impact that this might have. If people like these songs and if people are excited, that, then that's going to be great. I mean, we, we are spending a lot of time trying to get this right. This game's going to be huge, it buddy. Sound Even like, if it flops, you know, it's like going to be a freaking huge. Sound, you know? so it's, it's, it's quite interesting. It's a very different way of... Uh, of uh, I don't of think it'll flop, music. but like if it does, it'll go down as like one of the largest flops ever. And that's big in itself, but I, it's going to be huge. Wrong date you again, everybody. Find three samurai tracks available on streaming services. Chipping in, never fade away, check those out and at some the point. ballad of Buck Ravers. But we're excited to announce a fourth new song called "A Light." I always try and stare at their eyes in these and figure out their today. setup. I see that at least two lights, possibly over. two monitors. Don't forget that if you're tuning in late or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channel soon. Next up, Pavel and I are going to introduce you to some creative ways that you can solve problems in Night City. What are these creative ways you speak of? I like their little intros. Tools of destruction. I have to say it again. I repeat myself over and over and over. The ads, the scenery, the detail, the little bits and bobs, the cityscapes are so freaking good. So good. Like the windows, you can see the lights inside the buildings through the windows hey, and stuff. I have a job for you. Oh, you do? A client of mine is making an arms deal. He needs protection. protection. One cock, hot, two cock, hot, three cock, four cock, five cock, six cock, seven cock, eight cock. Eight times he cocked this pistol. Why? I don't know. Something I picked on this trailer for in the first place. Boom. I love the sound and the space they do this at. It's not a defense, a semi-automatic, chargeable, epid steel ammunition, pierces concrete like cardboard. It's a sniper rifle though. I wish they held this shot a little bit longer to see the aftermath. They show off so many shotguns in this trailer. Like all shotguns, ridiculous. Smart weapons are never great. Like Borderlands and other games that have them, they're like interesting and gimmicky, but uh, I hope this game finally makes them like useful and good. It's usually that lock on time just slows down combat. See if they're any good though. So many people are so hyped for the melee. I mean, I love the dismemberment. I'm still just really curious how they actually play. So hard to find like a good, accurate gameplay representation of how they feel. 
And it also depends on your gap closers and stuff to make it a fluent combat experience. Cybernetics is so cool in this game. So V, are you willing? Me? Yeah. I'm always I'm willing. Me. Why not? Let's do this. Trunk full of weapons. You got this. November 19th. Wrong date again. Thank you so much for joining me. Now there was an awful lot in that video, right? Because it's more than just guns. Absolutely. We have melee weapons, we have ranged weapons, we have cyberware, we have offensive cyberware, defensive cyberware, armor. We could talk for hours and hours about this stuff. I think just for today's episode, we should keep it simple and let's just talk about guns. Can you tell us uh, the different types of guns that will be in the game? So we have three distinct types of guns in our game. We have power weapons, we have tech weapons, and we have smart weapons. Now, power weapons are the most similar to contemporary weapons. One thing they can do, which normal weapons cannot, is ricochet bullets off of surfaces. So you can hit somebody hiding behind cover or hiding That's behind cool. a wall. I never noticed now, that in any of the trailers. Tech weapons, on the other hand, use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows... I'm going to pause it here for a second, because they're describing to me how this weapon works. Also, like, I've got my bright screen up over there. So they're saying this is an electromagnetic weapon. I need to go back a little bit farther, actually. Power to propel. Why, then, do we have primers this gun? Like, that little, the, the way the bullet casings are made, the, the center part there is where the firing pin would hit, igniting the charge, and shooting the round off. What does their purpose in an electromagnetic shotgun? Doesn't make any sense. You would change the way you make the casings and everything fully, wouldn't you? Pal, a little discrepancy. Cool. And it could just be something completely overlooked by the devs, because we think of modern firearms as that. And the ammo they shoot as that. It's the only image we have of them. Uh, modern has we don't think of them as like the, the black ball or the wow. I'm thinking like Civil War here and stuff where you get the powder keg and you put it all in and, and you pack it down. Like we don't think of ammunition like that anymore. That seems weird to me that they have primers. Fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows them to do is to punch through cover Eesh. or punch through walls. I probably hit. butchered a lot of the terminology there. I'm not an ammo expert, so like you can make fun of me in the comments. But also, it just seems Somebody weird. It's very odd. Even aware that you're there. Smart weapons. Also, if these are electromagnetic, magnet-powered guns, walls to hit somebody. Why is there? Sparks coming out of the gun. Why is there smoke coming out of the gun? Like a charge still went off. Or are these like hyper or uh, oh, hyper uh, hybrid weapons where they use electromagnetic and normal propellants? Who's not even aware that you're there. Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually track targets in real time. So you can hit somebody who's dodging, running away from you, or you can hit somebody so who's complicated. hiding behind cover. So Pavel, it's cool Cyberpunk though, but... doesn't just contain FPS elements, right? It's also a fully fledged RPG. So can you tell us how you guys approached introducing those RPG elements into gunplay? So I can tell you one thing, Holly. It wasn't easy to merge those two elements <laughs> together. Now, uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time merging the RPG and FPP side of our game. What the player will experience is that V changes from a small-time mercenary to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as the game progresses. So they will see nice that nice. reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows, uh, you will have faster aiming time, you will move faster with your weapons, everything becomes more in your control and that gives you more opportunity so that's cool and hopefully it's not just like this passive thing that goes on in the background and it's done through skills and stuff because this could lead to this weird situation where if it's passive and you just passively get faster and better and you don't even talk about it it's just something to like drive your character and make you feel more badass as you go along as it should because that'd be more realistic when you start a new game 
or switch to like an older playstyle, everything's going to feel really, really, really slow and sluggish and odd. So if they're trying to go for replayability and stuff, that's something to be cautious of. Because in games, when you're used to moving a certain speed, like if you've ever played a game and you have like five or six movement speed items on, then you start taking them off and you're like, oh, this just feels weird. It feels slow. It feels sluggish. It's not a good feeling. So we'll see how that plays out. Probably be fine. But like it can be something that just like makes the early part of games drag if you're just slow and stuff. But that doesn't mean there isn't enough cool detailed stuff to to cover that up and, and make early game flourish still when you're coming back Continue to it to from to end game the biggest encounters that we've designed for you so i have prepared a few extra questions for you pavel if you're feeling up to it of course okay well the first is going to be how do you find more weapons in night city like where will players be looking for them so i expect the players to look everywhere for new and exciting weapons you can, of course, buy weapons at vendor shops and they will house an entire catalog of weaponry that you can get. However, the best weapons that you can find will be taken from enemies or loot caches that we have everywhere in Night City. The weapons rarities range from... That was something I was curious about because they never really talk about the loot or you don't see the loot dropping anywhere. You don't... I'm curious how it works. Hopefully it's not like a repetitive animation where you have to loot everyone you've killed and stuff. It's a little bit speedier in 2020, but we'll see. From common through uncommon up to rare and then legendary. And as they go in rarity, they actually climb in power. Love However, the rarities. However, legendary weapons are very specific in such a way that they possess unique abilities that you will find on no other weapons in the game. The players Good will for weapon guides. need to make some tough choices to find some legendary weapons because maybe they need to choose whether to kill a person who holds the legendary weapons. Do we get any Dark Souls uh, vibes right there? That they want or to spare them because they like them as a character. So next question, let's talk about weapon modifications. What mods can people give to their weapons in Night City? So we have two types of modifications in the game. One of them would be modifications that we call attachments. So these would be scopes and silencers, and you can see them actually being attached to your weapon as you're playing the game. They give you statistics advantage, and they give you more opportunities in gameplay. The other part of mods would be software mods. Now, these are basically small chips that you install in, the, in your weapon, and they actually change the statistics of the gun. They can give you damage, they can give you accuracy, or they can give you more fire rate. Some of those mods actually change the gunplay on a more fundamental level, so they can give you non-lethal rounds, biochemical rounds, to tear through that armor even faster. That's really cool. So I cool. suppose for my right, so final far. question, uh, why don't you tell us about your favorite weapon then? Which is your favorite weapon so far in Night City? Oh, there are so many weapons that it's hard to choose just one but I can mention some manufacturers with their weapons that I absolutely adore. The first manufacturer would be Tsunami Defense Systems, who produces the sniper rifle Nekomata. That's a tech sniper rifle. That means that it can pierce through walls, so it can actually hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. Or All I can think of is Goldeneye 007, that little alien weapon. You can see through the walls and shoot people. So OP! Always had that thing disabled, usually in some of our custom games. Or who doesn't even know you're there. Of course, I also like a close quarters approach. And what that needs is a shotgun. One of the shotguns that they we have in the so game many is shotguns. budget arms. No shells are huge. Now, that thing is cast from pure steel, and it weighs a ton. However, you can cut a person clean in half with it. Another shotgun that I absolutely love, it's for a more refined approach, I would say is a smart shotgun, Kang Tao Zhuo. That thing has eight barrels, and that means it can track eight targets independently. Now, killing an entire room was never simpler. Uh, Pavel, thank you cool. so much for joining me. As long as they make the lock on quick, me. fluid, uh, and simple. That's always the weak point in smart weapons. weapons. When they, uh, play and like, I get themselves. that there needs to be a drawback Before of auto aim, but like. Two, this is a reminder that those who wish to dive deeper into a lore can now pick up the world of Cyberpunk 2077. This is a brand new book created in collaboration with Dark Horse Books that will give you an Her voice is going weird here, right? Night City tick before jumping into the really game reverb or whatever 
that is it for today's now it's back episode. to normal thank you so much for joining us don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again we will be uploading everything to our channels shortly thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be back with night city wire episode three soon well, it's another nice... I actually really like this episode. I like that it explained a little bit more on the quest. I really like the in-depth thing with the weapons, where you get them, how you get them. That's really cool. Um, there's a lot of really good information here. I like that. It, it gives me even more hope for the game. Like, these guys seem like they know what they're doing. It truly is. I love these end screens. I'm just yellow everywhere. Jump somewhere in the middle here where I'm not yellow. Hey, guys. How's it going? But I also did misidentify someone's gender in this, so that's always fun to do on YouTube. Uh... It happens, though. I mean, it looked kind of like an old lady with his head back like that. Yeah, whatever. Either way, everyone, do all the YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification. Keep an eye out for episode three. It'll be coming out here shortly. And I will see all of you in the next video. Dig figure out.